Hey, I'm Neil Brennan, and I have a Netflix special called Blocks, where I talk about uh, things that make me feel alone in the world. And then Jimmy Carr had the idea, why don't you do a podcast where other people come on, and they do their blocks, and you talk about it. We reveal things about ourselves, and everybody feels better, and the world heals. My guest today, I have known for literally almost 30 years. Yeah. Which seems impossible, because... I mean, it's... 30 years. It's, was like, it'll be 30 years in two years. Were you at the pilot years. or were you just I wasn't one? at the pilot. All right, because that was when I was 14. But yeah, this is You started when you were 14? We did the pilot when I was 14, and then by the time we started, I think I was 15. Look, here's the story. <laughs> I was a writer in the 90s and 2000s. Mm -hmm. In the my first job in show business So do you was, not consider yourself a writer anymore? I mean, I don't, I don't you know. You just I'm kneel. I'm in comedy. I'm you just kneel out kneel, here. Whatever. That's right. Look, I'll write. I'm not writing for other people. Fuck right. all that. Fuck that shit. You have to get that shit yourself. <laughs> I'll punch it up. It's not fair. Now that you've learned that it's not fair. Yeah. You're on the other well, side Well, let's talk about that. No doubt. Uh, hold on. All right. So I'm writing for a, a MTV game show called Singled Out. Jenny McCarthy, Chris Hardwick. You mm -hmm. may know Jenny McCarthy from Vaccines. And Chris Hardwick and from Talking may, Dirty After Dead. You, yep. Yes, too dark for dirty. <laughs> Next door, they were doing a pilot for a kid's sketch show. I started talking to the head writer, a guy named Dan Schneider. They then said, would you want to pitch? This is in L.A.? This is in L.A. It's mm -hmm. in the Valley. It was on uh, Vineland. Mm -hmm. And they said, would you want to pitch for this sketch show we're doing? I said, yes. I pitched a bunch of ideas. One of them was a sketch called uh, Learning Spanish with Paco Delicious. Incredible. Now, now, hold on. <laughs> Keenan, sit. Would you shut up? Cut his mic. <laughs> so I don't get the job. Then I see that they did the show and they changed Paco Delicious to a thing called Learning French with Pierre Escargot. Mm -hmm. Same basic idea, just wacky phrases. That's my way of introducing one of the greats of comedy. He was 15, 14, or 15, 14 15. when you did it. We just went over this. Yeah. 14 when you did the pilot, 15 when you stole my sketch. I'm kidding. Yep. <laughs> yep. We were like, no, we don't need that. We'll do a different version. No, no, no. Wait, him. fuck him. Yeah, yeah. Who's we'll, this, we'll, Neil? I don't like that. Yeah. No, nah, I don't know. Fuck him. <laughs> I don't even like the name of it. You, We met when you were 16, probably, and I was 20. How old are you now? I'm 44. I'm 49. So I was 21. You were 15. That's 29, right? That's 29 piece? Yeah. 29 piece That's chicken 29 snack. Piece. We did it. We did it. Now, but what's interesting, though, is I would argue that we professionally fuck with each other at the deepest of levels. 1,000%. Oh. But we don't yeah. We don't talk or, you know what I mean? Like, we do always, when we see each other. We don't need to. I was just about to say that. It always feels like we don't have to. Yeah. Because whenever you call, I'm like right there. I was like, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's like, go. Like, going for, to, I'm not kidding. Part of the I, way, like, I feel like I don't want to bother you because I know you have a million things going or a million things in your mind. And then I don't want to get to that part of the conversation where I've said something that disinterests you in the conversation's <laughs> over. <laughs> I, you could, it's not possible, <laughs> not possible. You know, like when you talk to like, you know, big brains and stuff like that and you say something and then that's kind of like the end of it. It's like, I missed it. Man, I missed, I missed a chance for My one brain's more rebuttal. too small. Yeah, it really uh, <laughs> Although the only thing I pitched to you is I want a Keenan and Kel reboot, but like a darker one, like uh -huh. a Bad Boys mm -hmm. where it's orange soda and gin. Yeah. And like, People it's gotta not, grow up. things aren't going well. Characters got to grow up. Yeah. You know? I wrote one episode of Keenan and Kel called Baggin' Sagging Keenan. Do you remember that one? It's a bagging competition. Oh, yeah. You don't remember. That was a hard shoot. Was I it really? Remember. It was because we were like, we had to like do that a bunch. Oh, you, know you had mean? to actually like know bag how to. it and then rebag yeah. it and then yeah. bag it. Like it was a lot of takes. I'm sorry. I Knowing like, what I know now, I would have. And then I think there was something wrong with like. The, the script? noise level of the bags, you know. What I so bet there was. Like yeah. If I know anything about <laughs> you, know business. what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah, it was, we have it was to a greet the bags, and yep. then you got to sit there for 40 minutes. And they're like, "Why don't you practice bag?" And you're like, "I'm yeah. 16. This is torture." Right. It, a little, but I want to talk about. I, it was still fun. <laughs> a couple good guy, Keenan Thompson stories. Uh oh. Right now, we talk about dropping everything and coming. Your daughters, your five and eight year old daughters, are next door here. You brought them. They're four and eight, but yes. Four and eight. Yeah, same. She looks five. Anyhow, um, uh, <laughs> you just came with your daughters. I asked you like a week ago. Mm -hmm. 
the my favorite Kena Thompson story that you may not even remember. My friend Kevin Christie got his email hacked. Mm-hmm. Your our mutual friend Kevin Christie. Yes. It this is maybe ten years ago, and the it gets hacked, and they send out the. I'm in London and I lost my wallet. Wire some money to this address. The thing that we all immediately uh, hit uh, delete. Most normal people, yeah. Yeah, most normal people. (laughs) This guy (laughs) sent money to help our friend Kevin, and it wasn't actually Kevin. It was a scam. It was a scam, and it wasn't an easy send either (laughs) (laughs) because I'm in Vegas. I'm like, oh fuck! It's like two in the afternoon, so I'm like just barely right. waking I up. I need to send a thousand dollars. You to know London. what I mean? How? Yeah. I'm like, where even is the Western Union in Vegas? You know oh, what I'm saying? So yeah, I gotta go to leave Western the strip, oh. you know, and like go deep, deep north, you know, of the strip or whatever to find the Western Union. But also, it was like Barcelona. I was like, what the fuck is he doing in it Barcelona? Was oh, that's he was like, so and also. He might be in trouble if he's in Barcelona because I know Kevin like right, probably he wouldn't go to Barcelona. For you no know reason. what I mean? And like he doesn't have a lot of resources. I don't think on the Spanish front. You know? No, so, not in terms of Spanishness. I was like, shit. I was like, I didn't think to text him. I just replied to the email like an idiot. Yeah. And you've re- you've sent that email a lot of money since, right? In, in the intervening years, I keep getting it. And I just answer it. You know, yeah, yeah, just, you just hey, I want I, good it's karma. so weird that this keeps happening. Yeah, but who am I to judge? But <laughs> and. Yeah, it was it was a it was a trek because you gotta walk through the casino just to get to like the valet area where the taxis oh, are. That's so funny. Catch a cab to a western. This is before Uber, so this is like so. I, cab my dance. point is, you're you seem nice, and you are nice. Is my point. A lot of people in showbiz seem nice, aren't that nice. You seem nice, and are very nice. Thank I you. don't seem nice. Am you nice. Are, you are nice. Right. Don't yeah. seem it. Yeah. So what do we learn from that? Do we learn to just take it at face value because that's where it, the joy might well, I mean, but you don't seem nice, but are nice. So right. kind of like got to do You can't some judge a book by its cover. Right. That's it. All right. So here's what I'm, uh, ex- why I'm excited about today's episode is because I don't really know much about you. Meaning like I've known you for 28 years, but I don't know what your neuroses are. I don't know what hurts your feelings. I don't know like how you what I don't actually know what it's like to be you at all. And I don't even know about it. Yeah, let's get into it. How did you become this is the most basic question. But like since most child actors are a little insane or their parents are insane, how did you start and what were your parents? Were they how they handle it? My parents is, you know, supportive. They weren't. You know, necessarily like stage mommy or living vicariously. Right. My mom was just, you know, the main one that was supportive. One of her friends saw me do like a, the gingerbread man in kindergarten or some shit. And was like, you should put him in some acting classes. So then I went to acting You should classes. roll with this little boy's life. You know what I'm saying? You know, put a saddle on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and went to acting classes for years or whatever. And like started doing local, you know, commercials and, you know, wound up on a kids news show where i was a movie critic and then on into auditioning for the mighty ducks and then nickelodeon and blah 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 oh, Mighty Ducks. but i started with my brother we both you know got our headshots together at like sears you know right. or something and like that was a legit way to get your head one thousand percent like borrowed a sweater long, been bankrupt a long time now uh, sears it's weird i think they're gone over don't look for it the original roebuck is still in brooklyn but I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird. It's situation. well, shit changes. Yeah, <laughs> um, things change You're kidding. over time. Yeah, over over oh. time, things will change. But yeah, and then you know, borrowed a sweater off the rack even to take the pictures, kind of thing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And yeah, put yeah. It back, left the tag on. Yes, sent it out to a bunch of agents and like a kid agents in Atlanta and stuff, and it just like started slowly. And then my brother kind of and you your know, mom's like and dad's driving you to auditions and stuff. Mostly my mom. My dad was, you know, off on his own. You know, he started his own real estate firm and stuff right. like that. So he was, you know, business guy and stuff. And so it was kind of like my mom. Did he get his headshots done business. the same day you guys did? Weirdly real enough, estate. he was like, this is for something, something totally separate. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to take my pictures real quick. Yeah, Century 21 wants me to get yeah, some yeah, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but my brother went to high school and kind of got cool and, you know, put, you know, acting on the back burner. But I never did. I just You never continued. got cool. Yeah, I never wanted to be cool. <laughs> that's, but that's yeah. kind of true. I'm like, you are cool, but like, 
the I've been telling somebody I was telling somebody yesterday like one of the keys to life is just if you want to be something go be a loser for 10 years mm -hmm. around that around it yeah. like Go be a loser. Like when even go like, not be the main guy. I yeah. never wanted to be the main guy. I wanted to be good. I wanted to be a good part of the the baseball team. You know what I'm saying? I was the runt on the staff of all that. Oh yeah. Like I was the you can attest. Oh, yeah. Like look at the look on his face. Guys, oh yeah. If you're yeah. watching. I mean, go to YouTube if you're not. It was a bunch of adults and then like Neil, <laughs> <laughs> like acne, no facial hair. The prepubescent voice was a joke, but you it was it a joke, well. but it wasn't. It wasn't I too would, far. You for thirty years have said super dude every yeah. time I've seen you. It's my. It's the one thing that rings out. <laughs> that and the neck. <laughs> I had a, I had a read, but for, I would do a neck. But they called me the boy. They would throw they would throw pencils at me. At one time, it's the meanest thing anyone said to me in a work environment. Other than some rock said to me, it's entire life. You can believe it. <laughs> Brian Robbins, the exec producer of all that, said, I should have fired you when I had a chance. <laughs> Which is like, okay. That, that guy, kudos. Yeah, kudos. Good yeah, for you. That's uh, but it was like funny, whatever. But I was a very low status, didn't do well, didn't get shit on, uh, would get, yeah. So I was just a loser for like, in comedy, I was a loser from age. 17 to 23 and then it was a little bit of a loser after half baked like it's not just a this, slow trickle yes it's not like a consistent upward trajectory it's no. up and down and then up like and if you shoot up i feel like you're gonna shoot down even faster you know what i mean yeah like, when you rock it up yes it's all great you know what i mean when you're up there blah 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 but then all of a sudden you start falling and then you're not able to catch yourself because nobody wants you to catch yourself right and they also resent you for shooting like a rocket and all that stuff where it's frogging people where yeah. it's just like a slow simmer people respect it like oh this guy he's, yeah, it's he's, your turn young man yeah you, you've earned been this. around yeah, and yeah. you're like i'm yeah, pat him on the back give him 49 his badge. so and how did you how do you think you didn't go crazy the only pressure was to get the funny it wasn't like the pressures of oh like i gotta provide for my family or oh my god everybody's looking at me you know what i mean like i kind of was aware of that part of it like you know it's like live public speaking or whatever it's people's number one fear but i put all of that aside and was just able to make it a playground kind of right and you know was just surrounded by people that cared you know not everybody was perfect but you know, I, you I've always a had couple, a team. You caught a couple molestations here and there. Never did. <laughs> never never did. You know what I mean? I yeah. Don't know. I mean, who knows why? Now, and weirdly, like, I got my butt pinched in Atlanta at, like, a fucking typing class. You know, some weird lady that was- It was just, worse for you in high know, school. You know, some neighborhood shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on. You had to go no, in a no show for safety. You know what I mean? That's exactly. how dangerous your neighborhood was. running to Hollywood, yeah. Shit. I had Hollywood save me, you protect know? me from these typing classes in Atlanta. Long nails. <laughs> Awful. I'll never forget it. Never. You wake up in the middle of the night. Sometimes. Oh, now. Okay. This I'm sure you've asked, been asked this question before. What if your daughters wanted to do it? Luckily, I know how to navigate it, so I wouldn't be hesitant necessarily. But I would want them to take it seriously. I would want them to be as good at it as possible, as opposed to either setting a trend or something or following a trend. Oh, you know what and mean? like, like TikTok? I want them to you be want like, like really actual, trained. you want them to have an instrument that they can. And not to take anything from TikTok because I think that's teaching them really Agreed. how to produce and edit and all kinds of other things. Somebody whatever. told me everyone under 20 has uh, all the stage skills. presence now. For sure. All of them. And that's a win, you know, but there is something to, you know. For China, you mean? The it is a win for China. It, it's a huge they're win killing. for China. They're killing it. China, congratulations. Yeah, you they don't need it. that fucking balloon. Yeah, you didn't have to do all that. We're also, just... <laughs> who said it was their balloon? They said it was their balloon. Yeah. Because at first I was like, who's saying it's a China balloon? They just, you, they just you, put you China on it. Yeah, you can, you can but it was probably made in China, yeah. well, even if it was somebody else. Here's another thing I want to say in terms of like an instrument. You had moves young. I think I told Dave this kid could be on Saturday Night Live. Like mm. when you were 16 or 17. And you had moves young, and then on SNL, you developed. It's like being a basketball player, where you just kind of need like low post moves, footwork, jumper, off the like. Just you have 
so many fucking moves at this point. Mm -hmm. It's glorious to watch. Thank you, man. It's cool. It's, it's like a, glorious. Like the, the amount of things you can get laughs on. Like if you say something and it doesn't get a laugh, blame the script. <laughs> Yeah. don't blame keenan because you know you can get a lot you can fucking juice it my thank you man i mean dude like it's like wild my how God. strong you are oh, like i don't you, say i you're already here what you know i got but like yeah. i've said this to you at the show like and i mean you say it often but like it's it's still wild to hear you know what i'm saying because i don't go out every day like i'm the greatest or i don't go out you know into any sketch even, you know what I'm saying? Like, if a sketch just did well, it doesn't mean that next one's gonna do well. Right. So like, I practice the humility of, you know, approaching it from scratch each time and trying to earn well, it. Well, that's the question I have for you, like genuinely, before we begin to your blocks. What's your ego like? I'll tell you what mine is like if you don't want it. Mine is defensive. Again, I look like I have a big ego, I don't. If you insult me, then I'll be like, I'm reactionary. Yeah. I don't know if my ego is out of hand, but I'm like, I am very confident. You know what right. I mean? Like, I'm very confident in like my status as a citizen, my status as a black man, my status as a father, my status as a 44 year old man who's been working for 30 years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm aware of like the money I'm, you know, my presence when I'm driving, this, that, and the other. And a lot of parking garage attendants try to like explain these things to me. Like, you know, you have a luxury car, so it's going to be a little bit extra. I'm like, I'm the one driving it, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I know what kind of car it is. Like, give me my ticket so I can go. I'm late. <laughs> but I don't like to. That's in my mind. You Look, know can I saying? speak to you for a second? Yeah. A lot, like a lot of people a wasting lot of the time, your time just, explaining yeah, things a little to you that bit, you've known for four years. Yeah. I'm not the type of person that like want to have to correct people on right. who I like. Yo, motherfucker, you see, it's me yeah, driving yeah, yeah. that shit. You know what I'm saying? I know how much it fucking costs. Like, yeah. I don't have to do all that. Yeah. So I'm like, and I'm very aware of my strengths, you know what I mean? And I'm just as aware of my weaknesses and fears. Like, I'm afraid of fucking bees, you know what I'm saying? Like, You're afraid of bees? Yeah, I hate them. Is that one of your blocks? It's, it's not. It be. should be. It's going to be. Yeah. We just we just booped it, and it For came sure. flying up behind you. See? <laughs> it's buzzing. Like, be careful. Like there's a bee. Literally, bee. There's the word Now that you say that, like, you. I have chills on the back of my neck, and I'm uncomfortable. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you have like, you have the thing that most people have, which is if like you get tested, then you'll be like, okay, but you don't even do it. You want, you, when you get tested, the test is don't, don't snap on them. I try not. I mean, I've had my of years course. of snapping on and, you know, temper flares. And then I always walk away from the situation like being like, that dude is probably going to forget about this in two seconds. I'm going to be the one. Living right. with the fact that like that just irked the shit out of me, or yeah. I was yelling and blah blah blah, and like it's on me, yeah. As opposed to just being like, "Cool, this is weird and crazy that you think you need to explain to someone how much their existence is when you don't exist in their world." And like, I'm, it's coming from them getting into situations where people are like, "Man, how you gonna charge me?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe because I look like you know all the hip hop or whatever, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Like if I was wearing a suit with a briefcase, would they even, you know, say those things to me? But since I have a hoodie on, they want to try to overly explain <laughs> yeah. my financial commitments to going outside, which I find to be wild. But I also try to, you know, break those traditions by being like, it's all good and tipping when I leave type shit. Just I like the, uh, that the fuck you tip. Fuck yeah. you a little bit. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. You know, charge me whatever you want and I'm still tipping. And, you know, try not to be a stereotypical person. Do you think you they it. learn? I would hope or at least remember in right. case With it comes you. back up again. Right. They'll probably, yeah. like, the next day, if so, uh, if a black dude with a hat and you know what I mean? a hoodie, they'll be like, sir, maybe, maybe. you understand your finances. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sir, right you this way, you mean, understand yeah. everything You're, about money. Right? Are you, are you on top of it? Okay, great. I thought you would be. I'm looking at my... People get mad when I look at my phone like I'm doing texts. I'm looking at... For the your, show. This is your script. Yeah, I'm People hold the their script. scripts in yes. their phones Sorry, these everybody. days. Your first block is diet. Do you mean dieting or just general diet? Probably both, right? Yeah, just like the overall concept of you know eating healthy. I guess you don't. You seem about right. The thing is that somebody you're, and I feel this way about Roy Wood too. Like that's just the size you are. So I can't really notice. 
Kind that of. That much I mean, of But a... I've had my swings, you know what I mean? Like, if you really look at a lot of my SNL years, there's been some some bloated years, you know what I mean, where I was really going hard on soda and, like, not working out at all type thing and just, like, going to work and then laying around until it's time to be used kind of thing, you know, like the literal whale. Shirtless? Um, yeah, super shirtless. Huh. <laughs> just for myself. Um, but... Even before that, it's it's been a lifelong kind of journey, you know, just genetically. I is think. your family like what size? What size do you think your body is supposed to be? I feel like I'm semi close now, but I could be more muscular. Like I could do more push ups and shit sure. like that to make it tighter. I got broad shoulders, you know what I mean? I, I don't think I was supposed to be like a very skinny person necessarily, yeah. but. You know, it, it could be better maybe in the thighs. I don't know. I don't know I where, was gonna it's, where say, it's supposed to be. I was going to say thighs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's thighs, what yeah. I had on my phone checking. Show me thighs. Yeah. Um, uh, you Now, you're like me. Anytime you do Steve Harvey, but it's also when you watch Family Feud, you're not a guy who does Steve Harvey. You're just a fan of Family Feud. That's where it comes from, usually. Like the joy of me doing Steve Harvey is the joy of me having watched and enjoyed Steve Harvey. Yes. Like, I I don't... Family Feud's probably the TV show I watch the most uh, I mean, that's not DVR. Like, if I'm just scrolling and like, yeah. oh, well, Family Feud's on. And by the Game way, it's show on... Game Network, by far, is one of my favorites. Like, if I could get past all the, like walk-in tub commercials and, and life insurance and stuff, that's the hard part about it. I have a walk-in tub observation that only you will understand. Uh-huh. The problem with the walk-in tub is you got to walk in butt and naked sit there. and just sit there and wait. Me and Leslie were dying laughing about this three <laughs> nights ago. You just got to take it. You just got to sit that there butt naked. That fucking water raises up and, and starts sliding probably, underneath you, your legs. Yep, and, and it's going to take a good wait. 25 minutes for at that shit least. to fill up. At least. And you can't take your pants off. It's at all that a point, humiliation. You got to be there. Yeah, you got to be there. You just got to sit there. You can't, they can't, once it fills up, you can't open the door. No. (laughs) (laughs) It's over. Also, drainage. You got to wait for that drain to go down. Oh, my God. That's a tough sale. But they make it look appealing. You're humiliated on the way in and the way out. How good is this bath? I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. There's got to be another concept that works better. I don't know exactly how. I don't think there is. I just think it's part of the humiliation of age i mean i had a, a i had a tough aging uh realization yesterday mm. let's say we both lived to 80 right uh-huh. the first 10 years of your life doesn't really count because you can't really remember it mm-hmm. the last 10 your shit's falling apart it's chaos yeah yeah so you really only get 60 good years mm-hmm. we've lived 35 and 40 good mm-hmm. years and we got about 20 left Oh my God, it's time to turn up. Let's go. It's, podcast it's on podcast. Pod- you know podcast on podcast on podcast. Network. <laughs> turn. It's time to get turned turn. all the way up. Um, when you put it like that, that's I worry. It. Yeah, I, I worry about the bowels. You know what I mean? As you the get bowels. older, like the cough fart that could lead into yep. whatever. It's the worst. Maybe it's blood. my biggest nightmare. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. Um, <laughs> that's why we got to turn up now. So there will be blood. Yeah, there will. But what we're saying is, in short, <laughs> so, you know, I've done an ad for Seed before. And like I said last time, I'm not a huge fan of bathroom stuff. I have a bidet. You know that. That's been a a boon for my life. But Seed sent me some pills. And I got to say, they got things going. If you know what I mean. They uh, increased my regularity. The trains are running on time as it were. Should I go on? It works. That's all I want to say about it because it's it's private. Start a new healthy habit today. Visit seed.com slash N-E-A-L and use code N-E-A-L to redeem 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed.com slash N-E-A-L and use code NEAL. NEAL, 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 seed, 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 seed. 
All right, so my question is, do you beat yourself up when you're overweight or when your thighs aren't right? No, I'm in full denial. You know what I mean? Like, I look in the mirror like, all right, this looks like, you know, symmetric or whatever, like a longer t-shirt, blah, blah, blah. Sure, cool. Sure. They don't turn to, like, the actual frontage. You just turn sideways and be like, oh, that looks kind of skinnyish. And you turn side and you see how wide right. you are. You're like, no, no, that's not the person. No, 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 no this is fucking yeah, that's, the that's I'm the wrong, to. yeah. I'm talking to this person. This angle's not yeah, appropriate. Yeah, I'm good. So that part, you know, bothers me about that. What's your inner monologue like? You don't need that extra sandwich. You know what I mean? You don't need. Is to it just like, like bro? Eat, go to is sleep. it friendly? In the beginning, when it gets out of hand, it's like, yo, what are you doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Look at yourself. Like, take all your clothes off and look at yourself. And you think this is a good idea to just do Chick fil A for the third day in a row type thing? It's like, you got to try harder, you know? Like, there's nothing wrong with Chick fil A, but everything in moderation, blah, 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 bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as dieting concerns, Dieting and exercise is kind of the only way to take care of your body. You can yeah, take it. this pill, you can do that. Well, now the thing. shot. Yeah, you can use this equipment, whatever, but you just, you have to do them both. You got to do balance. something. Yeah. Do you worry about, like, you got, I have daughters now, I should be more, like, do you worry about that? I mean, yeah, but like at the In same the time, you know, no one knows the hour and what the cause might be. I could fall off a cliff on some shit and been dieting and exercising the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So, you still but, doing that cliff parkour? Man, that hardcore <laughs> cliff shit, man. That hardcore you parkour. You come out, bro. You I would love to come by. Like, man, Let me know. Time, man. Text me, it's, bro. It's all at night. I'll be right there. So we have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> all at night? Wow. It's all at night. So they just, you know, got to be. Shit. But I do want to set a, a, a good example for, you know, good living and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I don't want them to look up to someone who preaches one thing and you know is a slob or super duper lazy and you know just eating kind of any old thing without regard you know did how was the co-parenting thing did you figure like was that hard because you were married two daughters and now you're divorced yeah it's the hardest i mean we're still going through the the process of but you know we're we're trying to make it you know our our biggest concern is their happiness. Right. You know what I mean? And making sure they feel stable and supported and blah, blah, blah. And as long as we can stay cordial and continue to grow from there, who knows what the future holds? You know what I mean? A lot of people come back around to each other and stuff like that. Um, so, like, there's nothing necessarily off the table, but it is the hardest thing I've ever had to do, for sure. Like, I don't know if I would be able to take it getting divorced, especially with kids. I think it would... You know Hype Williams, the director? Mm -hmm. One time, he was getting divorced. This is like 20 years ago. And he said, it just feels like downward pressure on my soul. Mm -hmm. Like, And it, that stuck with me. Because mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine that level of... I feel like I'd be so upset for so long. Yeah. I mean, it's upsetting, you know? Like, it's... um. It's not what you seek to do when you get into any sort of relationship or even get married. You don't think about that ever happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I, it just was a bubble burst for me, basically. But it's definitely part of trying to be a responsible adult. You know what I mean? Like you can't just continue, you know, certain cycles of things that lead to, you know, arguments or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And like if you just feel like you'd be better off individualizing for a period of time or yeah. whatever you have to do that to keep a peaceful household to keep a good you know example for your kids when you're around them and stuff like that what's the complaint about you as a partner mate hers i would probably i mean i can only imagine like i probably work too much you know um so too I'm, much money coming in you know Go maybe, ahead. maybe too even killed like you know, ah might, yeah might get you know boring right like you don't chill, it doesn't you know even I mean? nothing upsets Maybe, you right something like that well yeah, how are really you so say. even temper you smoke weed you always have yeah. is that part of it i mean it could have something to do with it. i'm just a mellow fellow i've always just, been that way just I'm you that's just who you are like, yeah that's just me little brother you know what i'm saying so right and never like i feel like i had to like grab my shield and sword and run yeah. out there, you know what I'm saying, and protect the town. It was like, okay, yeah. well, call me if you guys need me, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'll be it's here. funny how I'm the youngest, and it's like birth order does have a big effect on your personality. It definitely does. I feel like second children are always fearless, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Don't take, you know, danger as serious. Like, I remember yeah. I rode out 
you know, across a very busy street when we were kids without looking, you know what I mean? And my brother, like, got to the other side. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. I was like, well, I, just, well, no, I thought it'd be good. cool. I was just going to ride through and, I, you know, God got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, great. Okay, so diet, we'll just wish you the best. You know, that's all you can do. Just, like, stay um, supported, figure out what you like, and make it work for yourself, I guess. Okay, exercise can't stay steady. Same the thing. two-hander. Yeah, this so might be a three hand. Yeah, a little bit uh, because like I find something I like, like riding my bike. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it's a warm weather thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like I don't like stationary bikes. So when winter comes around, like now I'm off my bike. You know what I'm saying? Because it's fucking freezing. I'm not gonna just like any weather yeah. do it. Pe- just you like, never Peloton? Just like running. I've done it, but it's not right. something that I can stay consistent on. Just like treadmilling. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're doing the same thing for your muscles, but for my mind, it's just torture. You know what I mean? And I, I got to get outside, I guess, because I can relate it to playing as opposed to, like, exercising. Yeah. Weightlifting is like, as soon as that soreness kicks in, like, by the third day of being sore, you're like, oh, I, why am I? I'm sorry. What's happening yeah. exactly? Like, why am I torturing myself? You wouldn't believe it to yeah. look at me, but I've taken my butt, my glutes, mm-hmm. from a two to a six and a half. That's gangster. That That's gangster. And I think ladies respect it. Have to. Well, the thing about it. glutes is you got to turn them on. And I what I mean is, yep. let me finish. You got to you they are not activated in our lives. No, so you need to there. like fucking to make them. a concerted effort. That takes a year. Yeah. And then you got to then you got to go from there. You got to activate You got to activate glutes, the glutes, glutes and then they they're not activated when you walk, which is like glutes. Right. You got to actually on. get in there. And when you do work the glute, you feel it. It's like, oh, shit, that, there's yeah, muscle okay. in there. Yeah. All right, glute. Muscle, okay. It's sore. Okay. All right. You I have you glute. Uh, we see you glute uh, <laughs> driving hard. Yeah. I, number one, enjoy, you know, driving fast and, like, horsepower. You know what I mean? And, like, muscle and blah, blah, blah. Do you live, you live in Jersey? And, I live in the West Village. Do you have a car? I drive every day, all day. And you it's can't really 15 miles an hour. Yeah. But when I get my little chances, I, I take them and I just go speeding or whatever. Or if I am on the highway, like outside of the city or whatever, like I like to go at my pace. And sometimes there's people in my way and I'm like, what's I your pace? Give them. me a my pace is about ninety nine. That's your pace. When I'm on the highway is like that's a fair pace, I think, to like it's like 100 miles. You know what I mean? You yeah. 100 miles in an hour. It's a good like, even round a number. Good place. And I can control it. People know when you're going to be places. I can control it. I know the speed limit is 55 and 60, and I, you know, try to cooperate as much as That's possible. That's for but squares. When you're in the middle of nowhere, it's like, yo, come on. What are like, we doing? What What are we doing? You yeah. Know what I mean, like, why are y'all just, like, cruise controlling at 60? North Dakota, I think they don't about have state a troopers. speed limit. And and you haven't heard much trouble from You that. know what else they don't have? Black people. There you go. <laughs> That's Whoops. The issue. That's the issue on speeding. <laughs> well, no, like no, I'm not saying five feet speed. I'm saying I suggest going there, but, but it's kind of like I'm straight. Ah, um, I've always wanted to go to. Is it Sturgis? Sturgeon? What is that? That's bike the rally? motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the COVID it, rally. It just doesn't feel, that they have every year. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> doesn't doesn't feel too safe for a guy. Um, like so like the Audubon, growing up on that kind of, you know what I mean? There's there's different places where they don't have that rule. Have you gone to Germany? No. Have you done like racetrack shit? No. I've do you never... watch? Do you do you watch the Drive to Survive on Netflix, the Formula One show? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Why don't you get one of those machines? They're too small. They look uncomfortable to sit in necessarily. Okay. So I go with the versions that work for me. Like the Challenger is more comfortable than the Mustang. You know what okay. I mean? Because it's wider and it's just blah blah blah, and it's still. I'm talking about one of them computerized machines. Oh, to just play the video game? It's not. It's a simulator. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I want to live life. You know what I'm okay. I want to simulate life. So. Okay, I'm all about VR, bro. I hear you, bro. You gotta get outside, man. <laughs> this is weird for me. Yeah, I'm no. panic. I'm covered in. Hives. I like to be outside. I like to hear that wind. You know what I mean? I like to blow past people. Like, like I like pulling up on. I'm. I'm sorry, but I do like pulling up in a rearview mirror. And if you don't move out of the way, you are you be a flash attention big time? Wow. I'm a flasher and like I am a let you know either side of your mirror kind of. Do you like, hang out the up? side of the no, But I do look at people when I pass them and they weren't cooperating at first. Like it doesn't do anything. 
they don't even know that they look back and it doesn't affect them yeah, at you all. You just go, all right. Uh, it's all you, my own stress. So if I'm I see you again, I won't go the speed limit. What do you yeah, want me to learn? I'm not endangering the people in my vehicle, sir. Just for you yeah. to like be a daredevil or be reckless. And like, I, it makes me feel bad because I can't help myself, especially when I know I have a car that can perform or whatever type shit. And I'm just like looking at motherfuckers like, yo, y'all just are really lollygagging. Yeah. Well, what if your daughters are with you? I mean, I don't put them in danger at all. But, you know, we don't drive slow. We get through our traffic. This is like shit. the John Moran interview. Yeah, yeah. Where's my gun at? <laughs> Where it's like, me no, and my, me and my daughters am. always be at 200 miles an hour. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Here's a question I got for you. What's your parenting like? Meaning, do you think about it? Did you just go, I'm going to do what my parents did? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, when I mean, you have a kid, is it like, okay, what am, what's my approach going to be? It was very much, I in the beginning, I was raised this way, and then I had to learn and adjust and adapt. Number one, like, I'm compromising. I'm parenting with someone else as well. You know what I mean? So we're, like, on the same page 99% of the time. You know what I mean? But, you know, I might be pushing an issue that's not that serious based on my upbringing or something like that, and I had to learn to adapt. Uh, adjust and adapt to, you know, the present situation based on, like, what the child can handle or where they're at with their age. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just thinking, throw all the rules down, blah, blah, blah. I'm not thinking that I'm talking to a four-year-old. You know what I mean? You have to, like, learn how to adjust how you send the message based on the level of education that the the person you're talking to has, kind of natural kind of stuff. I'm just thinking, like... You don't do this and you don't do that and blah blah blah, blah without the whys, you know. What look I'm here, blah blah blah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of look here because that's how you know I was raised, um, which is fine. And it, you know, I do believe discipline is you know important for a kid's life. You know what I mean, safety wise or whatever. Yeah. like to go out into the world and like know what to look for. Don't just like be oblivious to you know the fact that there are negative people in the world, but we don't have to focus on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just want them to be you know, prepared when with those tools in the back of their mind even in case they do need them, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, know what a, a wolf looks and sounds like, basically, stuff like that. And do you think in order for them to know what a wolf looks like, it's like that the black parenting thing where it's you need to, especially with boys, you need to show them severity so that the white man doesn't show them. Obviously, with daughters, it's different, right? Yeah, only because that shock from other people, I think, resonates so much longer as opposed to, like, a lesson from a loved one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when there's a real shock to the system, it's like, yo, my whole kind of world is shattered. Like, it's not just, you know, everybody can be anything and we can all play together and be happy. Well, it's malicious. Very much so. Yeah, it's funny because I've known you for so long and I, you've always been sort of who you are. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like you were always pretty chill. You were always a hard worker. You were always like you, you never went through a dummy phase, or you never no. went through a. I I like being mellow because I can always turn it up or turn it down. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I like staying kind of even kill for the most part because that's how you kill motors. You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna just high rev, you know what I mean? Like high RPMs oh, interesting. all the Back time. To cars. Yeah. Hmm. All right, you bite your fingernails, but you clip your toenails. Yep. I can't reach my toenails to bite them, and I don't think I would, but I think it's But weird. you're not sure you wouldn't. I can't say that I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I really can't. But I think it's weird that I refuse to clip my fingernails. Like, I would rather bite them. You know what's fingernails is I've started thinking of fingernails, the fact that I'm, I'm not a nail biter, but LeBron, remember when LeBron used to bite his nails all the time? Yeah, I mean, athletes, it's it's tough because they have a lot of ticks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, any he little thing that though, bothers him, like, if he feels his nail, he'll have to bite that off. You know what I'm saying? Just because it ha- right. everything has to be a non-distraction, basically, or whatever. So, like, anything I feel that's not as smooth as I want to now, my mind is on that as opposed to on the game. You know, and that kind but of But the thing is, you let me see your nails real quick. They're all right. They look all right. They don't look, like, gross. No. But like, they, you're not an everyday biter. I'm not. It's only when I feel like they're too sharp or whatever. But I bite them as opposed to clipping them. Like, I clip my toenails, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, I refuse to clip my fingernails. I don't like it. I don't like the feeling. This might be the smallest block since Ronnie Chang said that he has to shower after he shits. 
Every time? Every time. That's not a block. That's You're doing the world a favor. <laughs> um, that's a bridge. Yeah. Uh, this thing is, I don't know if it's necessarily a block. It's just a, it's just a, a weird thing I refuse to put down. I can easily like, just like clip my fingernails, but I don't like it. And I'm like, well, why am I paying so much attention to the thing that, that happens to me, though, all right, so I'll go, like, if I can't get a clipper, right? Mm -hmm. And you do the thing, I'll go between one of the, one of the big two mm -hmm. and the side ones. Mm -hmm. And the thing where it slips and you, no like, slight, you paper cut your... Your gums, that's no good. And then you're, like, you're basically, like, a bear. Yeah, At this I, point, you're, I like, I'm an animal. Yeah, I have a technique. What do you got? It's just the, it's the same two, I think, teeth, basically, and never, like, bottom on the two? sides or whatever, like, top and bottom two, and then, like, turn the finger like it's a, you know what I mean? What's like the weirdest thing you've ever, are you a flosser? Yeah, and it sucks every time. Oh, I like floss. Really? Yeah, I have a little because floss of, thingy in my pocket right now. You like to see. I love seeing my work success. and what was you know what left I mean? behind. Like, yeah, yeah, who yeah. are you? What's Look your what I'm story? Getting out of there. A little crummy? Yeah. Who? <laughs> Talk to me. I like smelling. Yeah. That dental I like cost. smelling. What I like because I because I get shit caught between my teeth and it's mm -hmm. gross. Uh huh. And, uh, and you can feel it or yeah, I can like feel it because yeah. my I'm like an athlete but with my mouth. I'm telling you. Yo. So every, every, so you know what I mean, ladies. <laughs> All right. So and then you had another block which was okay. Toss and turn in your sleep. Talk to me. I don't know if I toss a normal amount because to me, I'm just changing positions or whatever. But sometimes when I don't sleep much, I'll notice like if I'm like, if I'm catching like micro naps often, like three or four hours here as opposed to like a full night's sleep, I'll notice like shit, I just turn back and forth like seven times. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to just like laying down and sleeping for a long period of time. Do you have pleasant dreams? I don't remember them, but the ones that are bad usually stand out here's some irony for your ass i don't think i've ever had a pleasant dream mm -hmm. when people go sweet dreams i'm like i don't know what you're talking about yeah, yeah. i'll say four nights a week my dream is that i'm at snl and lauren is mad at me now four nights a week four nights a week this is going back 20 years that is, is that, that not because insane? you're a super fan of the show i'm a super fan it, of the show okay Always knew someone there, mm -hmm. Mike Schur, Seth, a bunch of people. Like everybody. Somehow, I never, I didn't ever spend time there until Dave hosted in 2016. So, like, I'm not kidding. Four nights a week, I wonder, Lauren's mad at me, I and Lauren's never been mad at me. I wonder if Lauren is the representation of like the biz. It, I mind, think basically unequivocally he is, and you feel like. At SNL is like you being the writer and outputting or you being the Neil that yes. we all know you for. Something. And you're not doing enough or you're not. Yeah, doing like it I'm right just in whatever. it's like a stre it's like high school. Yeah. It still baffles me. I don't even think talking to Lauren about it would help. Not at all, because I don't <laughs> think it has anything. I think it's all like a slightly metaphoric. It's like all it's things, all a right? metaphor for it's just a stress dream. Yeah, it's like the most basic one, and your mind kind of sugar blanketed it and put it into an environment that you like. You know yeah, what I mean? and then it's like, oh, well, this is how I can handle breaking down, as opposed to like the world pressures of like, how's my Netflix special doing, or how's yeah. this doing, or whatever. You can consolidate it and put it in a world where you can actually function and kind of see, or maybe kind of dissect what's happening without over panicking. Because like, if it's too big, you know what I mean, like. Yo, my numbers in Australia is low, yo. Like yep. that's enough to give anybody a heart attack. You worried about right. Australia? Right. I'm like, I'm worried this about fake sketch that I wrote isn't <laughs> gonna isn't working for this like whatever. You know? And it's ever by the I have those too sometimes. Mm -hmm. I had a different one, a different genre that somebody some SNL people were in. Mm -hmm. What's your experience there like? It's a highly emotional, you know, fucking stress pot that. That Tell pot me about bubbles it. up to the I'm top. I'm there every night, bro. Yeah. For, for eight hours. <laughs> it's like starting a new pot every Monday, and it's going to boil over, and you know it by Saturday. But you, but what's you funny is you don't seem strike me as the kind of person who writes a sketch and then gets, like, might cry if it gets cut. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big crier anyway. But or whatever. Getting your I've car had and very at emotional like experiences with like you know your writing is very personal to you. You know what I mean. So anytime I put up something that is lame or it doesn't connect for whatever reason, I'm like, fuck, man. You know what I mean? Like it it doesn't feel good at all. How do you ride out the downs? You have to learn that that place is special, and there will probably be a tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like when it's the end of the season, and you're looking back on your season, and you've been fucking up, and you're new. You know, that's grounds to be nervous and there's kind of nothing for anybody right. to help you with that. But when you're in like season three and four and five and you've been doing it for a while, you're still getting your shit cut. You got to like start to separate, you know, the emotional attachment of your ideas to yourself and just kind of just keep searching and fishing and working with others. You know, what's what I mean? funny blah, is you're blah, like blah. the best and worst person to get advice from. Because mm-hmm. you'd be like, look, you're going to be here 20 years. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> look, you're going to be There's here a chance years. for you to be here like it's nothing. You know what I mean? There's yeah. always another show, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be so many more. So, you're going to get 400 shots at like it like I It's not like you're going to be the door awkwardly at any given point. No, you you're not going to get replacement <laughs> season. That never know, happens You don't worry about to that. me. But I think that's kind of the best way to navigate the storm a little bit when you're in it there. Because those cuts are going to happen, and they're going to happen a lot. You know what I mean? It's just do what you it is. Do follow-ups, meaning you and Brian, the great Brian Tucker, who wrote on Chappelle's show, he pitched the racial draft and uh, player haters ball and something else that I'm forgetting. But, like, a great, a huge fucking help on Chappelle's show. Like, I think me and Dave owe him money. <laughs> um meaning just he was like the only person really from the charlie donnell and him were like the he one says two. he gets someone recognizing him from i know black people like once a week still yeah to this day i by the way i do too they think i'm him yeah which is Hilarious. just a, look that's, racism, that's racist. Works, racism works both ways that's racist yeah white people look like all mm-hmm. the same to black it's mm-hmm. fine but what i what i'm curious about is they got tucker goes they fucking cut it do you go what let me go talk to somebody or do you just go ah fuck it a bit of both like sometimes like when i feel strongly about it i'm like all right so what's going on like why didn't why aren't we you know i mean is there anything that i can do differently can we try this again next week or whatever like i need more of a conversation and sometimes i'm like fuck it i don't give a fuck like i saw that coming or i heard it in the room like it just didn't connect oh right what if a sketch but i've had a sketch get a standing ovation and get cut you know what i mean and i was really like kind of pissed about it but don't let me gloss over praising Brian Tucker, by the way, because no, 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 no. everything Tucker, I've done what did great Tucker on that show, for you? It's, it's dynamic. What up with that? It's the best. What's up with that? Black Jeopardy, Family Feud, you know, mostly anything, you know, black and kind of. Yeah. And by the way, he's point. a white person's yeah. white person. Yeah. Look him up. Brian yeah. Tucker. I know black people. Yeah. He's. He's a, very, yeah. a white man. Yes. Yeah. But he loves, you know, black culture and he writes you know comedically very well in that you yeah. know kind of direction you get in rhythm yeah and like i need that writing structure you know what i mean like i yeah. have all of the reference material i need just growing up and watching what i've watched but if i want to bring what i thought was funny about dolomite or do you know all those you know things i grew up on school days and like i have to you know formulate it a certain way and then like some people might not have ever heard of spike lee so i got to like keep that in mind and like all right yeah. well if I'm going for this joke here, how do I get everybody on the same page from this point to that point? You know what I mean? And yeah. Like, that's, you know, where he's filled those gaps in in my life. You know what I'm saying? Because up until that point, I was kind of struggling. What year was that? He came in. He came in 05. 05. So I was in like my second we, year. They there, put him on waivers. We didn't develop what's up with that until like my seventh year, something like that. So which we were doing was like, like oh nine one 10. offers or whatever. So yeah, I, that's what I always wonder with you, which is like, how do you weather the just the the emotions of it? Because I've worked at Siren Life for three weeks, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, nah, I'm good. That's when it's too much. You know what I mean? When it's a tight window like that, it's just yeah. like, oh, this is chaos. Right. Yes. Yeah. And also like, yeah, I didn't get like the like the whole season worth of like it had some ups and downs it was like i mean it was three weeks as opposed to 20 weeks you know? right we have yeah. 20 weeks and like, by the way it's three weeks over four years right so it wasn't like yeah it was a pressure cooker around. every single time yeah it was like what you got what you got what you got yeah, nothing yeah. all right yeah thanks a lot for coming you no know, no no. Well, i had good do. shit that got whatever okay. i get it's a whole other argument yeah. but because of my ego from doing a show mm-hmm. it's like man you're not cutting my shit 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, for sure. Like, if you have a show and then you come to a place where you're like, we decided, and you're like, oh. it was hard in my first season coming from Nickelodeon and all of that, like, to not be utilized. Like, I remember getting, like, you know, I, I call it getting donutted where you don't get a sketch at yeah. all. You just got a big zero and you're not on the show at all that night. But yeah. you're there. Do you do good nights? You got to do good nights. You know what I mean? And like that's Good nights is when tradition. they all stand and wave. Yeah. And if you've got nothing on, you just got to stand. And you got to stand there looking salty yeah. or crying or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, what am I doing this for? I'm very confusing. Like, I think I yelled at my manager, a guy who d- d- didn't deserve that at all. I was just like outputting towards somebody who happened to be there. Yeah. And what I realized was that nothing is coming out of this temper tantrum. Like, I still have to write a sketch that's going to work. Like, me being mad about last week doesn't make this funny that I'm trying right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to learn how to, like, let it go. So you're good at letting shit go? That shit up there, yeah. What are you not good at letting go? All kinds of shit. You know what I mean? Like, Tell I have, me. I have a podcast called Blocks. I Tell know. Tell me about shit that... I mean, any kind of, temper like, shit. done wrong Emo shit. You know what I mean? Like, anybody, like, trying to, like, do wrong towards me because I don't feel like I spend my day trying to, like do wrong to others kind of thing. So when it comes yeah. my way, it's like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, I try not to hold grudges, but you know, certain people earn grudges. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let you put that I, down. I'm a grudge guy. Mm-hmm. I'm a grudge guy. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows that. About I, me. I'm, a grudge. Heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grudge guy. The idea that some people earn grudges. I told somebody a couple of days ago, I go, two friends of mine have stopped talking to me. And I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, look, you I got a good it. shot. Yep. You have a good case. I'm not going to be like, yo, man, what are you? No, no, no. no I, probably, I get it. Yeah, I got to no, take I get it. it. Yeah. I, I, I probably did that for you. Yeah. yeah. I, I take, you're not wrong. Yeah. I would block, I would, uh, I would dis or whatever, block yeah. me or not speak to me anymore. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's not even big. It's not like, and then I, it, no big acts of betrayal. It's just more like enough. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I I have a a habit of doing that for folks. So yeah, you'll let them go, or you or people will stop talking to you. No, I'll hold on to them because I feel like they have earned it. You know what I mean? The like, grudge. Yeah, you've developed this thing. Now it's a grudge, and like it wouldn't have been if it wasn't according to what you've done. You know what right. I mean? So like, yeah, this isn't out of nowhere. No, this is going to be a lesson, and right. however long that lesson needs to take, and a little bit on top of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do I one time? Uh, an ex of mine i used to say uh hey i'm gonna need a she would apologize for something and the next day i'm gonna go I'm gonna need another apology yeah this is a two apology yeah a little on top you know what i mean <laughs> nothing wrong well, with that. sprinkles yeah, yeah come on man do you ever get caught up in like i'm being a little self-righteous or is it always like no this is so far beyond this is extra yeah, I mean, I I try not to get preachy because I I think I've been preachy in the past without practicing what I'm what I'm preaching is like like a lot of finger wagging basically yeah. as opposed to like looking at maybe my behaviors that might have triggered any of that you know what I mean and without me even knowing, but at the same time, my personality like a lot of Tauruses don't even argue because we're logical thinkers and we know when we're right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to argue if I'm not completely sure. But if I'm arguing, it's because I know I'm right. You know what right. I'm saying? And it's like, why do you don't enjoy you do it? it? If you know I, you're right? No, because okay. it's like, I don't like arguing anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you're bringing that out of me where I'm repeating myself and I'm running down all this thing, you know, it's not my most favorite version of myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why are you bringing this out of me, basically? Like, why won't you just listen when I said it the first time and take it for that being the facts, you know what yeah. I'm saying, or that being the right way or whatever? And, you know, it's not fair because it's removing people's choices, removing people's perspective and blah, 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 and not allowing them to kind of, like, come to a conclusion on their own. It's, you know, presumptuous of me to just be like, see it how I see it. Don't you see it immediately? And so I just just learned how to like feel fine running it down, but also kind of let them know that I'm irked that you're not listening to me and I'm repeating myself for the fourth and fifth and sixth time. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, then sitting with you, I'm wondering how you deal with showbiz, your success. You've been successful for a long time, and friends, colleagues, people you sort of know. How do you get through 
there's some like status differences. I find it the hardest, one of the hardest things in showbiz is like the the status. I'm lower status than so and so, and like it's strained, or I'm somebody's lower status than me, and that's strained. It's my least favorite part of it, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't like classism, placism, yeah, any of that, you know, because I feel like that's where bigotries come from, you know, and I, it's my least favorite part of it. Um, and I, I try to avoid it like the plague. Like I don't call, you know back I, I try to call them background act, uh, actors as opposed to like extras or atmosphere yeah you know what i mean like we're all kind of people here and like yeah i hate when you know there's a you know, kind of rogue pa yelling at them or treating them like subhuman yeah. or like you know kind of cattle herd and i i can't like i can't wait so you do them think of them as anything. cattle okay. i think of them as sheep but not cattle <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you um but yeah i don't like conversation like that but i'm not even talking way. about background actors i'm talking about like friends. i'm just talking about the hierarchy of yeah. the business and then in society too like even in your friends you know what i mean like a lot of people put certain friends you know on this pedestal because of what they might think their status might do for them and they're like you know what i mean yeah. And like, yeah why is this person the the leader of this friend group type thing you know what i mean like aren't you guys all just friends yeah because you just grew up around each other and that's just that and you there's each other's fucking company. hierarchy everywhere though it's crazy yeah, like it's, it's a societal thing how do you deal with resentments because of that toward you not very well you know what i mean like we did the byron allen presents thing the other night and uh it was like two three weeks ago roy and, did it right uh roy did it um lovitz was there tommy davidson you know gabriel iglesias yeah howie mandel yeah um it was, it was a good grouping but I went out there with, you know, no monologue because I'm not a stand-up, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just talking shit or whatever. And I started getting heckled by these two people in the audience or whatever. And I was trying to, I, I broke the jokes and I was like, all right, let me explain what we're doing real quick, blah, 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 blah. So I kind of gave them an opening to start talking back to me or whatever, which is fine. I'm usually kind of prepared for it. But they were like, I was like, so we're filming this thing, you know what I mean? So we need you guys to like stay excited, keep your energy up, blah, blah, blah. It's not necessarily live, but we need you to act like it's live. And they're like, oh, so you want us to be fake like you? And I was like, I heard it, but then I was like, let me not jump to conclusions that she's calling me fake necessarily. She might be calling like acting fake. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. But it definitely triggered me. I was like, you calling me fake? Like, who the fuck you think? You don't know me like that? And yeah. it made me want to go down there and be like, hi, my name is Keenan. Who was your name? And why do you yeah. think I'm fake exactly? Like, where are you getting that from? And I wanted, to, I was dying to know the origins of what made them say that to me. You know what I'm saying? But. I'll never know, and it might not even be that serious, but it definitely triggered me in a way, and I was like, mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, that's like, it's also like time and place. Mm -hmm. Like, lady or guy, like, I'm doing a taping. Yeah. There's 400 people here, and we're on the clock. People. Yeah. It's also like, you're the last, you're one of the most decent people I know in or out of show business. So, like, <laughs> so, yeah. I was like, I'm sorry. I what? mean, you're fake as fuck. Fuck. Everybody but, knows that. I mean, everybody knows you that. You know what I'm saying? Especially Denzel. I'm, I'm kidding. But this is uh, my boy Denzel. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but my question is, how do you deal with friends resenting you? Or not, I'm not talking about heckling. I'm talking about tension within the friend, within your friend group. Because you've, I've seen you roll thick and thin. Mm -hmm. Meaning like you've had, I don't know if it was periods or shows or whatever, where you had a lot of friends around. And then where you didn't have a lot of friends around. And I'm wondering if you went through a cycle of like saying yes too much or not, or you know what I mean? Yeah, but it was a lot easier, you know, before I got married for people to just be fine just being around. You know what I mean? You like, were fine be with them being around. They or they were, you know what I mean? Like once I got married, it was kind of like, oh, you're family. And if I'm not like really in family, like people just kind of like, you know, distance yeah. themselves or whatever, because you're not helping with the kids. You're not helping us do anything. You know what yeah. I mean? So you, are you a really, uh, are you really a friend? Yeah. It kind of becomes like a little more apparent based on their participation. So people kind of just fade away or whatever. And now I'm on the other side of it. It's like, I'm not calling all those people to be around me just because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be at the show by myself. Like, it's all good. And I will leave by myself. Like, I don't have no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I kind of. That sounds a it. little like you're a little feel a way about some of the people. Am I wrong? I don't. Okay. It was just, it was kind of just an era. You know what I mean? Got and it. it. You know, it was a lot of fun having a lot of people around. And now it's like, I'd rather go see a lot of people 
and then be able to like come and go as I please yeah. without them being at your job and yeah, your yeah. room and or just group traveling like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't mind groups, but I meet the group there type thing. Yeah. That's what Uber that's what Uber Black is so great. You know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> Um. All right, and fine. Okay, so what makes you feel lonely? Do you ever feel like, what are the trials of your life? I mean, the biggest is, you know, a daily reminder of, you know, my situation, basically, because, yeah, I'm in a, you know, a co-parenting situation, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's not like I'll, like, every three days I'll deal with that issue. You know what I'm saying? It's like every day because I want to be in my kid's life. I want to be around them. I want to be in her life. You know what I mean? Like we are friends. We have a bond. We've been married for 10 years. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't want to like think that that can just all just be thrown in the trash and just be in the past. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like there's going to be a lot of Christmases and birthdays and Thanksgivings and things like that. And I would love for everybody to just get along. You know what I'm saying? So I have a daily reminder of that. And that's very hard because it starts as soon as I wake up in the morning. I got to see, you know, what are we doing about getting into school or what's their plan? You know, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's definitely like the most ongoing thorn in my side only because it's, you know, a, an, a, an emotional thing, basically. And it, it was not necessarily where either one of us wanted it to be when we first started out together or whatever, but it's where we're at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And we're trying to make the best of it. That's, you know, my family and like stuff like that makes me very emotional or People that I have love for that I that I hear, you know, are struggling in any sort of way. You know what I mean? Like even watching your specials, it's hard to watch the non comedy points, you know what I'm saying? Or when it gets too real, it's like, that's my buddy up there. You know, yeah. these are things I never knew. I didn't know you were like one of ten until I watched three mics. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it explained a ton. But that's that was, by the way, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the point. It of it. It's like, explain everything. Oh, all right, let me explain. You know how I seem very overly like somber? Let me explain yeah, how we got like, here. On a plane. This is me. From there. A somber guy. But even in, in the blocks one, it's like it's interesting to watch, you know, what you think or what you don't think people would have to deal with because of you know, he's so funny, he's so smart, he's so connected, he's so this, he's been doing it for so long, he's so blah, 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 blah. So, like, to witness other people's, like, tribulations, like, yeah, it, you know, it, it resonates with me because it's like, what happened to the Garden of Eden? You know what I mean? Like, why can't we just swim around in cotton candy type shit? Like, why does shit got to be so fucking real a lot Somebody of the time? said uh, in, like, my ayahuasca crazy world, said uh, in the spirit world, being a human is, like, a tough assignment. Yeah. It's like being a traffic cop. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's <laughs> like, out there. yeah, you fucking, it's not, it's like, it's not going to come to you. It's, this shit is not that easy. <laughs> people hate it. Yeah. People it's hate not, you. people are like, oh, fuck, I got to go be a right. human. <laughs> oh, well, this is a separate thing. But when you were talking to Mike Tyson, how scared were you? I wanted, where there's a clip, explain to people what happened. On your po- was it on your podcast or on it his podcast? It was on his podcast. So he had done our podcast the day before as a favor to us. It was our hundredth episode, and he was like our second guest. You know, like our first guest was Kel, basically. Great. So we didn't we don't do a lot of guests. We just right. you know talk to each other. Me and my partner. Shout out to Tani. Um, shout, shout out, out to Tani. you already know podcast. I hate to plug on you. I'm please, sorry about please, that. Please, please, please. <laughs> so he had so much fun with us on our pod. He was like, "You guys should come do mine." So it was like a day later or something like that. Cause it took like a day to schedule it, and it was like, okay, the next day we'll go. So we go, sitting there with who kid, you know, weed and mushrooms everywhere. You know, everybody's happy. I'm yep. chilling because you know I don't do all that stuff on yep. camera or whatever. And I, you know, I'm not a mushroom guy like that. You know, yeah. hard on the stomach. <laughs> you know, I was just chilling. I was just you know there, and everybody you know is having a good time. And like I, I have this n word hang up. You know what I mean? I try not to use it. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I don't like how free a lot of people are with it. Oh, you've always felt that way? It's been stronger lately, especially having kids. Yeah. Um, But no, I was guilty of using it freely, you know, as a younger person before I, I guess, was awakened to the nuisance of it all, I'm guessing. Embarrassed to say this? Same here. You know what I mean? Did a joke with it. Like Like it's nothing. Like a, a gigantic unforced error on my part yeah but you know everybody you know is allowed to you know mistake and learn but it says the, the guy who's never on social media go ahead yeah but the <laughs> refusal to 
make that conversation make sense is what bothers me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't even want to talk about it. They just want to use it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't know, that's a problem for me. Um, but he said something along the lines of, if I'm not an N-word, I'm nothing. And I right. was like, well, I'm not going to let you just sit in that and think yeah. that without offering, you know, a, another way. No, of I know it's it. it's like an intervention. Yeah, it, it, it was almost and I try to intervene in any anytime I hear people talking like that. There'll be a really you know funny I mean? sketch by the way. Uh, yeah. And it didn't matter who it was. It just happened to be the most ferocious man walking the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've known Mike for years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like he's, you know, a, a partner mm -hmm. in our company type thing. So it's a it's a family affair, but at the same time, you know, he's a, you know, a bit of a loose cannon. So at any given moment, he could forget that I'm sitting here as his friend yeah. and he could just see someone that he's disagreeing with and it could, he could know, see Trevor Burke. get out of control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's just like, is that a Jerry curl? What the fuck is going? I'm like, no, I don't have a Jerry curl, Mike, at all. Like, what is, what's happening? What's happening right now? Um, I kind of saw early on that he was just trying to make a point and he doesn't necessarily love to be challenged. Because it is his perspective, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's not wrong in his perspective. But I didn't want him to, like, just let that go without trying to lift him up out of that. You know what I mean? That's a very dark statement to say, yeah. especially when you've accomplished so much. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I was just like, it's also not a great look on the seven-year-old that might be watching that clip either. Well, it's, you know it might, I would bet it would just be, like, in incredibly confusing like wait what do you mean like i don't even know maybe they've never heard the word As heard a kid, it a little yeah, bit or whatever yeah. and then you're like i mean it what? wasn't confusing to me because i i kind of know what you i know it's that like i know the argument yeah. that he's did. like yes. it's like what it's like protection against getting hurt by society so you go well what difference does it make yeah et cetera, et cetera. i'll be the one to tell the joke on yeah. me first right yeah. it's a version of i don't give a fuck you think i Very give a fuck so. i don't give a so so, but then it's like so rising. for four sec, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, he's mad." You know what I'm saying? But I never yeah. thought he would be like to the black because I don't be trying to press people to the point where it's right. physical anyway. Like if I was to stand up and be like, "What you say?" Yeah, I know what kind of reaction that's going to bring out of a person. So I was never going to let it just go there. Right. But at the same time, you know, I ain't no pussy. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's also just an opinion. So like my opinion is just as valid as yours. But right now, yours is sounding kind of wild right now, my guy. <laughs> my guy. Straight up. Straight up. Um, and did how did it... I don't even remember how it ended. It ended with everybody kind of throwing their two cents in, and we talked about it and went back and forth a little too long, and then eventually got back around to it like a happy topic. He was laughing again, you know what I mean? And he was, you know, being a kid. And then he gave me my respect. He was like, I like, man, you a deep dude, whatever, blah, blah, blah for, you know, standing my ground, I guess, or whatever. But, you know, that is, you know, a, a fight that we're really fighting in black America. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, you know, the proudness to represent what's in the mirror. You know what I mean? It's like an ongoing struggle. So when it reared its ugly head in one of my heroes like that, yeah, like I couldn't like just not speak on it. I'm like, that's just crazy to me. You well, know? you also see he's 55. Yeah. You're 40. So it's like strong. Somebody 65, strong, mm -hmm. like kind of, it's like in them really strong. Oh, 55, very strong. Mm -hmm. 45, less strong. Mm -hmm. 30. It's like, it just takes time. But it's crazy to me, like, to kind of witness. Yeah, because you're right. Like, our generation is a little more removed from it, but Chris Rock isn't. That I, went that's the guy who I was thinking of. When they segregated school in Brooklyn. Like, yeah. That is a the conundrum. first. Not just a segregated school, year one of segregated school. That's crazy. He's got crazy stories of like janitors saying shit where you'd be like, what? Yeah, man. He, I mean, yeah, it, they're his stories to tell, but he has like wild, like it, that's not possible stories. And it breaks my heart because this is a hero of mine. So not knowing that side of him. Growing up, it was like that CR was as big as the Colorado Rockies. You know what I'm saying? It, like, it might well, it's as well the same have been. Logo. He's still alone. I know. I know. You know. It's disappointing. It looked better on him. You know what I mean? In our eyes, like, because he was the one, like, talking for the people. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just baseball. You know what I mean? So. Bought that with his, with his own money, out of the budget. 
Good for him. You gotta he make spent those fifteen swings. grand. Yeah, but Jackson. he didn't make no money. I mean, he made like like he blew it all on the logo. Yeah, no, nope. Michael Jackson with the fucking trampoline thing. You know, have you he seen built it. I didn't know that. He paid for it out of his own money. Did like you ever see Michael Jackson his, live? His, no. He mortgaged his house or something to like have that moment at the Super Bowl or whatever, and that was like his iconic like. Statue that way, he moment. got his money back on that. Yeah, I'm sure. Chris got his money back too. Yeah, he did. Do you ever see James Brown live? Nope. But we got Al Sharpton. So I'll take that. <laughs> That's why he wears his hair like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember. Yeah. What's the best live show you've ever seen? My first concert was the Isley Brothers in Orlando right. outside. That was incredible. Um, and then I've been very like kind of lucky to be on shows that had like like a couple songs from very cool people. Like all that had a great yeah great list of people and then SNL has an incredible list of people so like oh right oh I yeah watched no that's Bono, like, yeah swing from fucking microphones and shit that was dope and I yeah. watched Paul McCartney close it down and do 10 more songs when you know we weren't even and taping Prince. anymore Prince forget about it. I saw yeah. Prince in Vegas Prince might be the ultimate like I never saw anybody just grab their different instruments and shred them all it's the only guy the guitar seemed like it was part of his body yes like it was like he knew it too well and you know some guitarists like kind of like look at their hands it's a not bit even every once in a while it's he like a it's shit, his, like his, doing just splits itching. and heels while yeah. playing it's just unbelievable there was a show in uh 2004 in las vegas 7 30 james brown 9 30 dave Chappelle. <laughs> crazy and like i went to him i was like this is never gonna so happen backwards. even i was like this is who's but it around? wasn't at that it was right. like it well it, like james brown was sort of like not it was probably didn't sell out till late right that's like, crazy no it was so it was like this is never gonna happen again <laughs> james um, brown opening for day no no it was separate shows that's oh, what it was shows. like just house of blues 7 30 james brown 9 30 dave chappelle House of Blues was special. Yeah. And, uh, it was very yeah. special like that. Um, That's crazy. Uh, all right, buddy. I don't... Is there anything else, emo? Anything we haven't covered? I think I try to stay even keeled because I am very emotional. You know what I mean? And I mm. know that, you know, it. it's painful to cry. You know what I mean? It's painful to go there. And it takes a while to dig you up out of that. You know what I mean? Especially mm -hmm. for a tourist or whatever. It's hard for me to change my moods. So when I'm in a down one... It's like, man, I hope something comes along that's going to lift me up out of this. Probably why I watch a lot of, you know, movies that I like over and over again. Yeah, because yeah. I know the joy is there. Like, I yeah. know Groundhog's Day is going to make me laugh. I know yeah. Trading Place is going to make me feel good. You know what I mean? And that's, like, probably my go-to to escape the things that I can't control that, is, that are making me sad kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I would much rather stay in the middle than be a lot on either side like i don't want a whole lot of hyperactive you know activity if the other side of that coin is going to be so far down you know what I'm yeah saying? like i would much rather just stay kind of like yeah hopefully on an upward trajectory or whatever trajectory trajection is not a word i'm sorry look man. i'll cut it if you need me to I'm if sorry. you email me i can email somebody uh -huh. about that moment yeah and then we'll get into it there right um my here's my point to say i'm proud of you doesn't even you know what i mean it's like i uh, doesn't even come like you can say it polar no uh <laughs> somebody told me Pol somebody said uh i'm proud of you to polar and she goes you can't say that it was like a peer mm -hmm. so like i'm proud of you little guy but it's like mm -hmm. you're four years younger than me mm -hmm. and but we've been like you know no. similar but i'm it's not this there's not really a word it feels like seeing you is like a bit of like a all right all right get, we're still good like everything's you know what i mean like it's still we're still yeah. both yeah everything's still everything's from still going. i remember 1995 yeah, yeah yeah we're still going right? okay we're still the we're same still thing yeah, same, yeah, yeah, yeah. same life we're going right okay yeah, 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 yeah. We, we out here so yeah, yeah, yeah. we out here we're outside yeah um so i'm like just appreciative of your existence oh man as you. a as like a guy on my tv but also as like a dude that i get to see in text yes well, thank you, number one. Number two, you know you don't have to say any of that. You know what I mean? Like, I would feel it just because of our banter. Like, our banter is so real and so, like, back and forth. And, like, I know 
or maybe we both know that neither one of us has to do this kind right. of thing. You know what I mean? There's so much other shit that we could be doing. So many other people that we, you know, know or spend more time with or whatever or are closer to. But I get excited when you hit me because I am such a fan. You know what I mean? And I have been for such a long time because we I'm a fan of people that we laugh in conversation as opposed yeah. to, like, forcing anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's, when it's very natural, like, those are the people that I would prefer to even be around. So... Watching you as a friend, you know, ascend, ascend to, you know, where you're at and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, I could say I'm very proud of you, you know what I'm saying? Because you've done a lot out here and you've, you know, you carved a lot of, you know, senses of humor for people, including mine. I think I still have the season one and two DVD, you know what I mean? Like, I watched that shit as another companion that I just yeah. knew would make me happy if I was like, Stuck in Vancouver or something, not right. really knowing how to live life yet. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm yeah. not a guy that's going to take himself to dinner by himself or just walk up to people and be like, hey, I'm Keenan. Like, would you like to like get to know me and be friends and show me around and like get into adventures? Like, that wouldn't I'm work. I'm, fa- I'm glad you put season two, episode four on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One and two. Good DVD. Um, yeah, there are good DVDs. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope that's what people take away from this is that Chappelle Show was a good show. Yeah, but I mean, also, like, that was only the, be, you know, kind of starting era, but after even the Half Bake, because we watched Half Bake religiously before I even really knew that you were behind it. And then I noticed, and then it was like, shit. And then came the show, and then came your stand-up and blah, blah, blah. So it was like, yeah, man, you have boldly stepped out here in a bunch of different ways and, you know, always, you know, rose and risen to the top you know, head of the class kind of situation because you are funny, you know what I mean? And you are a good dude. I say I'm proud of you only because it's like my opportunity to say so, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's not like you need to hear it or what I say Right, goes. it's, I, we both, you know not, I mean? we're like, like a touchstone. Like, yeah, it's nice to fucking like high five you when we're like on our way to on our doing way to play some different shit. games. Yeah. 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 It's great. It's great. Keenan. So is there anything like happy about this podcast or it's all nah. just blocking? Yeah, I'm trying just to get blocks. to the bottom of it. Oh, I guess we could do. All right, tell us one thing you're happy about. Oh, I forgot to ask the main question. I always forget. Movie of your life, biopic. Who plays you and what's the character arc? I think Roy Wood. <laughs> we can and get him. I think the character arc is the guy that the people don't know. You know what I mean? Like everybody, I work so much on television. They think they know that person, but then they podcasting is a great window into it. Yeah, because not even in talk shows, you still have to do kind of the talk. Yeah, show yeah, yeah. But podcasts, I can sit here and just like I don't even have to raise my voice. You know, like yeah. this is my natural speaking voice. People yeah. are like, oh, he's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> great. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That I think is the journey. You know what I mean? It's not super dark behind the curtain, but it's it's different. Right. It's different, and it's. What? But I guess who was that guy when he started, and who are you now? That guy was very like Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like very, you know, not necessarily street, but hood. Like you know, just down with everybody and like moving with you know how we all kind of middle, lower middle class kind of moved in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Growing up, you know, just very black and very aware of that and loving hip hop and this, that, and the other. The guy on TV is much more eclectic and broad and open to the world, you know what I'm saying? But my personal perspective is, you know, very, you know, black centric. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. All day long. <laughs> From the Dwarf House, the original, 24 seven. Y'all don't even know, dog. Hey, man. Y'all don't even got no 24 hour Chick-fil-A's no more. Um, And play by Roy Wood. Have you compared thighs? Very similar. I look at his older, like, kid pics. <laughs> bro, we look like twins. I have a, pic- a picture that he posted of himself where he was, like, The one from, something. like, a week ago? Yeah. The, like, the like, Little League one? Yeah. 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 I was like, I look and have that exact same picture in some sort of way. It's sure. funny when you can tell what year something is from the quality of the photo, mm-hmm. like, the gloss, where you're yeah. like, I yeah, that's 1989. And what's even crazier is... You kind of can't tell now with movies. There's like a 20 years kind of technology window where it could have been 94 or it kind of could have been 2003. You're absolutely right. It's weird. Yes. Yeah. It's like the end of analog, beginning of digital. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
Keenan Thompson was our guest, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. KeenanThompson.com? Uh, I'm in the, Do you in own the, it? In the process of acquiring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the process look, of acquiring look, it. Look, light a candle, uh, say a prayer. Net, I think is pretty strong. Dot but net? No. Dot, got, dot, you I got the dot all, You got dot net. Yep. That's great. And Biz, did you dot even com. fuck with dot biz or dot TV? I don't think I did. <laughs> I don't think I did. KeenanThompson.net. <laughs> it's under construction. Instagram. It's just Instagram. much Come easier. On, just go to Instagram. Just link, Instagram. We'll throw you a link tree. Yeah. Uh, the great Keenan Thompson. Thank you very much, man. You got it, buddy. Oh, man. Good times. <laughs>